Hey, 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 scrappy entrepreneurs. How are you? Colleen here, getting all ready. How are you? All righty. It always takes a little while for people to start joining this Facebook Live, so I'm always here kind of talking to myself, but take one, because we only do one take, <laughs> these Facebook Lives. And if you happen to be watching the replay, pretend it's live. You can ask questions, comment, answer questions that I'm asking. I will get notified and answer your questions. It's just like it's live. So how are you all on this Monday afternoon? I'm getting a little settled here. Sorry about that. And fingers crossed, fingers crossed, we make it through this Facebook Live. I live in Florida and it is our storm season. And I just heard some massive thunder boomers out there. So Hopefully, I lost my uh, internet twice yesterday, so fingers crossed, I am hardwired in. So, while we're waiting for people to join, I always say, drop your name in the comments, say hi, let me know who's here. I see eyeballs coming in, so let me know who it is joining me. And then I always play this um, shoot the breeze game while we're waiting for people to join. So, uh, tell me, Hey, Tina, how are you? Uh, the best thing you did this weekend. What's the best thing you did this weekend? Tell me in the comments so we can get rocking and rolling and see who is joining us here. <sighs> hey, Flinks. So I was just saying, I'm hoping I make it through this Facebook Live because we have massive thunder boomers out there and lost internet twice yesterday. So, hey, Karen, how are you? And it seems to be our afternoon thunder boomers. Of course, we're very fortunately that we are not up in Louisiana. Uh, hola, hey, hola, Karen. <laughs> Blinky says, howdy. So what was the best thing all of you did this weekend? This is my shoot the breeze game that we play while we're waiting for people to join. Because we have lots of eyeballs coming in. Hey, Catherine, how are you? Catherine was, oh, I don't have them here. Oh, hang on one second. One second. I forgot something. Hang on. <laughs> hang on. Hang on. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All righty. Sorry about that. I almost forgot the, one of the most important things. I was going to say Catherine was one of the uh, lucky winners of her very own set of finger puppets. These are my tough love monsters. And I played a little game uh, over, I did I play it in the group or the club anyhow, over the weekend. I was a little bored this weekend, so. All right, let's see here. Hey Paula, how are you? You spent time with your hubby, nice, nice. Tina says, how are you today? I am well, thank you. Hi Catherine. Hello Janet, how are you? Let's see, Karen says, spent the last week with my best friend from high school in, or in the Oregon coast. Oh, I bet that was nice. I bet it was a lot cooler than it is here. We're melting, melting, melting here in Florida. Catherine says, spent time with hubby. That's nice. Oh, haven't seen her in 10 years. That is fun. Is she like one of those friends, like, doesn't matter how long you're apart, you just kind of get back together and it's where you left off? Fun. Tina says, ate too much Mexican food. Yum. Yum. Oh, in the tummo. Okay. All right. We got lots of people joining in. So if you're joining in, just say hi. Let me know who is here so, so I know who's here. I didn't use my special StreamYard app today because I just wanted to be direct, direct with you all. All right. So today we are talking about, um, oh, I did forget to ask <laughs> if any of you are in the U.S., um, and your prime Amazon, Amazon prime customers, they're having their prime days today and tomorrow, some pretty amazing deals. So anyhow, I know Flinky got a new laptop. Let's see, Janet says, I have a few of those kinds of friends, saw them the weekend before my last at my 40th high school reunion. Isn't that fun? Just to kind of catch up. That is so much fun. Karen says, exactly. Awesome. So anyhow, Amazon Prime, two days. If you're an Amazon Prime customer, major dealios. Uh, I got a new TV for my living room because, hey, Elizabeth, my current TV, um, it's getting these big splotches up in the corner that seem to be growing downward, and it's also really hot. So I'm thinking, like, hot, not like in a hot kind of way, but hot like is, and oh, 
fire hazard kind of hot. So <laughs> I don't know. Anyhow, got a new TV. All right. So let's get started. Today, we're talking about old school skills. And I'm talking about old school skills that I know for a fact the younger set just simply does not have. They just do not have. Uh, oh, Tina says, got new ring alarm system on Amazon. Okay, Tina, which one are you looking at? Because I am looking at uh, alarm systems too, like a camera, like maybe for my back deck and my front porch. I'd be curious to know what you got, which one you got, because I did see those on Amazon Prime. So, uh, all right, so back to our topic of the day. We have lots of folks who have joined us. This is fantastic. Hello, Linda. So, uh, let me ask you a question. What old school, I know I'm going to mess that up because it's really hard to say, old school skills do you think that we have that the younger set does not? Which old school skills do you think we have as women over 50 that the younger set does not? I'd love to see what you put in the comments because that's what we're talking about today. Tina says, that sounds scary. Glad you're getting a new one. Yikes. Yeah, like it feels like a fireplace putting out heat. <laughs> My TV and it probably shouldn't. Uh, anyhow, uh, but anyhow, I got a new like flat screen. Like it's a big one, but it's like super light. So we're all good. But anyhow, in the comments, I want to know which old school skills do you think we have that the younger set does not have? Let's see. Tara says, can't stay long, have to go to work. Ooh, boo. Well, you can catch you can catch the replay, Tara. You know that. It's like it's live. Just like it's live. Manners. <laughs> that is one. That is one. Although, I guess being, I don't know, being down south in Florida, the kids do seem to have a lot of manners, except they always call me ma'am, which just makes me crazy. Ma'am, would you like help to get your groceries to the car? Like, do I look decrepit? Like, seriously. I mean, I know they're trying to be polite, but come on, ma'am. We know how to go an hour without our cell phones. That is very true, Janet. Let's see. Kara says, grammar and spelling. Yes. Yes. Pet peeve of mine. That is a pet peeve. In fact, I did this game over the weekend. I don't know if you saw it going around, like, where you put down, like, what your sign is, your favorite ice cream and you know, all these things and it's like your biggest pet peeve and mine is people who don't know the difference between lose and loose i don't know why it's a pet peeve but it, it does make me kind of crazy uh let's see using paper for things like notes and paper bills yes right patience ah that's a good one elizabeth you guys are hitting the nail on the head here i got some different ones for you but these are good ones hey stephanie how are you all right so Let's get started on the old school skills that I wanted to talk about today, but keep yours coming. These are good. Stephanie, we're, we're um, talking about which old school skills we have as women over 50 that the younger set simply does not have. So let's see. Tina says, that's respectful down here. It is. And it is, you know, I'm from St. Louis too. Calling somebody ma'am is respectful. It just makes me feel old now. <laughs> work ethics, respect, grammar, spelling, yes. Okay, Stephanie's pet peeve is there and there. There, there, and there, right? Yeah, okay, Karen says there, there, and there. All right, so you and Stephanie have the same pet peeve. All right, mine is the lose and loose. I don't get that one. If you lose weight, your pants will be loose. I don't know. All right, I won't, I'm not going to go down there. Okay. Okay. Would have, would up. Oh, that's a good one, Susan. Hi, Susan. That is, yeah, that is true. Okay, all right. So here's, let's let's get down to it because I'm already 10 minutes in. I'm like already late. <laughs> I, I get too excited here. All right, so when we're starting, here's, here's, like, here's kind of my uh, preamble to this. So when we're starting our businesses and we're over 50, what I see so much of is we spend so much time like, just worrying, like emotional energy worrying over all of the stuff we have to learn and all of the stuff we don't know, right? All of the stuff. And typically, these are like tech and social media skills that we're just not familiar yet with yet. We just don't know how to do them yet. Or, you know, we're just, we're green with these things, right? So we spend a lot of time worrying over these skills, these tech and social media skills. And what happens is we kind of get tunnel vision about the tech 
and the social media, and oh my God, it's going to be so hard to learn all of this tech and all of this kind of stuff. We get this tunnel vision and we, we completely forget to figure out and sit back and think about what we do know and what we are bringing to the table. We like kind of forget that because we get this laser vision on some of these things that we don't know about yet. We haven't learned yet. And so we get too focused on these tech and social media things and we completely forget to acknowledge what we do bring to the table. And that's what I want to talk about today because some of the things we're bringing to the table are probably things that are so ingrained in us from like little kids that we don't even realize we have these skills or assets that we're bringing to our business. So that's what I want to talk about today. So let me just check our comments here. Okay. All right. Hi, Susan. I see your comment there. All right. So the truth is technology is definitely important and we do have to embrace it, but that is not the question. The point is, and I'm looking at my notes here. I got a lot of notes today. I had a lot to say about this. The point is that we do, we, we need a lot of skills to be successful in, in business, whether they're tech, social media or other. And as women over 50, we have like some seriously badass skills that we don't even realize we have. Like I just said that they're, they're maybe so uh, ingrained in us, they've been just internalized, we don't even realize we have them. So that's what I wanna talk about are these old school skills and the fact that we should never, ever underestimate these skills and, and the asset that they are to us in our businesses, okay? So in this Facebook Live, I'm talking about what I consider to be the three top old school skills because there are a lot like you guys were just commenting i always say you guys you ladies were just commenting um that's cultural vernacular it's always you guys you guys anyhow and i'm not even from new jersey but anyhow okay so i'm talking about the three top old school skills that i think are so incredibly important to the businesses that we're starting and that's what i want to talk about so and another thing i want to say is that what's really amazing about these old school skills, like as we talk about uh, these old school skills, um, they might be a little bit elusive, but they're incredibly vital. And more importantly, they are skills that are a huge advantage for us. They are a huge point of differentiation for us versus the younger set, say the millennial set, because you think about it, these old school skills are things that we've like earned and learned over decades, over decades, right? And the thing is technology and time has changed so much that the younger set today um, hasn't had a need to learn these skills, nor have they have the opportunity because things have changed. And you'll understand what I mean when we get into the skills. Um, that I'm talking about. So having these old school skills, man, never ever be like embarrassed to have these old school skills ever because they are a huge advantage. So, okay. Number one old school skill. And it's a good thing I'm not drinking liquor because old school skill, that would be, that would be tough after a couple, couple martinis. All right. The number one old school skill that I believe we have is we have learned to do things right the first time. We have learned to do things right the first time. Now, what do I mean by that? So what I mean by that is today's technology makes everything easy and expendable, right? So everything is easily changeable. You don't have to put as much effort into creating so many things because you can change it up. You can copy, paste, delete, undelete. You know, it, it's just in the click of a button, you, you can just change things up, right? Well, it, it makes us lazy in a sense because everything is just cut, paste, delete. Oh, undo that, delete, redo. Ah, I didn't mean to do that. You know, make a backup copy, all of these things. Hey, Christina. Slug and rodent problem in the garden. That doesn't sound good, Christina. <laughs> so we're talking about old school skills. So this first one, we do it right the first time. So 
technology, I think, has made us, um, it, it, it has allowed us to be very lazy in that sense because it's just super easy to change things. Oh, just copy that file, make a new one, start over, move that paragraph here. You know, everything is just easier with technology in many senses. But when we were growing up, we didn't have that technology at our fingertips. We did not. And so this is where our advantage comes in. This is totally where our advantage comes in. So here's a question for you. I'm not, I was going to say how many of you, but I'm sure like 100% of you remember this. But how many of you remember the typewriter and that bottle of whiteout? How many of you? How many of you grew up with the typewriter and that bottle of whiteout? And you know that bottle of whiteout, like, you couldn't wait long enough for it to dry, so you'd go ahead and type, and then the key was all gommed up with the white up shit all over it. <laughs> Remember that? Who remembers the white out, huh? Okay, Janet says, of course. Yep. And I even have, oh, this is funny. This is the new white out that you can use in notebooks. And of course, it's like a high tech pen that you just like, and it leaves a little thing. It's like it's it's not the liquid stuff. It's not the old school whiteout. It's not the real stuff. So you okay? So you all remember the typewriter and the whiteout. Catherine says, "Oh yeah, Christina. Yep. Janet's a stuck keys. Yeah, we'd gom them up because we couldn't wait for the whiteout to dry. Or you're sitting there going <sighs> on the paper, right? Okay, waiting for it to dry. Okay. Yep. Okay, I knew it. Everybody. It was a silly question. I admit everybody does not. Okay. So. Think about this, when we were typing our high school papers or whatever, right, we tried our damnedest to not mess it up, to not misspell, to not mess something up. Otherwise, you had to get out the damn white out, or worse, you had to like rip the paper out and start over again, right? Now, where am I going with this story? Because people are like, yep, okay, Tina says, yep, still use white out like that, yep. So here's the deal. This gave us actually an incredible skill because we knew we couldn't just copy, paste, delete, back, you know, forward, you know, backspace, all of these things. So we have this skill we don't even realize. We had to learn to plan, to organize, to edit, to get it right the first time. The first time. So we didn't just sit down like at our blank laptop screen and just start typing away. Shit, no, man. We had to research and outline and write and, you know, do all these by hand, of course, all of these things in advance before we even sat down at the typewriter to write the essay or the paper or the report or whatever the hell it was, right? So what this gave us was this ability to really – um plan and organize in advance. It gave us the ability to pay, you know, really, really focused attention to details. Uh, we had to learn to connect the dots of the big picture in advance before we committed anything to paper. Um, otherwise, you wind up retyping it over and over. So it wasn't like you could type your report and be like, done. No, we had to outline it and go back and change things and think about it and do all these things. And then we sat down and typed the report because once it was committed to the paper, it was committed to paper, right? Or you were redoing it, right? Susan Masters says, no autocorrect. Lucky for us. Yeah, right? I do hate the autofill. I do hate that with technology. Christina says, yes, patience, eye for detail, paid attention. Yes, we had to. And Karen, you're right. We started with a rough draft. We planned it. We went back over it a million times. We crossed things out with a pen, wrote in the margins. You know, we had notebooks full of notes. We did all these things. This is something, you know, we look back on it and we kind of make fun of it. Like, oh, we were in the dark ages with the typewriter. But when you think about the skill it gave us, this uh, advanced planning, thinking the big picture through. Now, admittedly, I was the one that I would like do the paper and then write the outline afterwards because you always had to turn the outline in with the paper for the teacher. And I never could get that outline first. It's like build it and then I'll write the outline. But anyhow, it is so true. We had to really think all these details through or you're, or you're retyping the whole damn thing. Because if you wanted to retype just one page, 
it never worked, did it? Because you could never get the piece of paper exactly in the right space in the typewriter, right? So it wouldn't fit on the page the same. So all these things that we kind of laugh about today gave us these amazing skills that uh, kids today, they don't even have the opportunity to learn them because they don't have to go through that. They have it much you know, easier with the um, computers and all, but what then they miss is that planning ability, right? So they're, okay, somebody's laughing, right? So I just see this funny coming up. So it's a huge asset. It is a huge asset. We had to really take our time, as Christina says, we had to have patience, we had to pay attention, we had to really focus on the details. We had to think it through. We had to edit, do rough drafts, come back through it again. So we were able to take this big picture, break it back down, and make sure we were getting it right in the right format, the right um, flow, all of that, and then we committed it. And that is a huge asset to us now because even though technology today makes it easy to change things, really like with the click of a button or the roll of a mouse or hell now you can even tell your damn phone to do stuff. You don't even have to write or click, right? You just tell it to do stuff, but it creates lazy thinking. It doesn't, I, maybe lazy is a harsh word. It doesn't challenge your mind to think this stuff. It doesn't challenge your mind to think through things. So maybe it is lazy thinking. I don't know. But anyhow, so it, the lazy thinking is what I refer to. It leads to what I call the modern spaghetti model. And for those of you who have known me long enough, the spaghetti model is where you just take a whole bunch of shit, throw it against the wall, see what sticks. And that's your strategy. And I think that's what technology has enabled us to do today whether it's the ability to start a business super fast or just create something super fast. You can put it out there, see if it sells, and if it doesn't, okay, on to the next thing. So that's kind of where we are today. But we have this amazing ability, actually, to not do that spaghetti model. We can actually think through our projects, work through you know, what we're thinking about, work through our ideas, and you know, put them in an orderly way and we have the ability to think through the details and like what could be the consequence of that if we do this and that kind of thing. So we don't have to rely on the spaghetti model. So um, you guys get what I'm saying. I know you do. You guys get what I'm saying. I'm not crazy, am I? Editing, expand research. Yes, yes, totally, Christina. So I know you all, you guys get what I'm saying, right? This is making sense, right? Give me a... Give me an emoji or something. Um, so it's what I think happens is with technology today and the speed at which we can start businesses and we can put new ideas out there, what happens is um, it enables us to put just a whole bunch of mediocre shit out there, see if it, any of it sticks, and then go with one of them. And I don't think we're like that. I don't think we're programmed that way, which is one one reason why sometimes the speed at which business goes these days kind of intimidates us because we're thinkers, we're planners, where we need to know what the consequence is before we start so we don't have to retype the damn paper, right? So I kind of call it the whiteout syndrome. Everybody says yes. Janet says, I think I'm overboard. I get caught up in analysis paralysis. We can do that too, Janet. I think some of that comes down to uh, mindset because the more we're analyzing, we're analyzing, we're analyzing, then we don't have to actually make a decision and go forward. So it's a, I think it's a mindset thing also there. And we've all been there. We've all had the analysis paralysis, you know, we've, we've been there, but anyhow, I think, you know, this is an amazing skill that we should not overlook and it, it's not really tangible. It's not a really tangible skill, but if you've had any opportunity to work, with uh, like younger people, and I think I talk about it later, like I spent my whole adult career working in um, educational publishing. So I spent my life basically on university campuses and college campuses around the world, talking with teachers and all these things and students. And you know, this is just something we would talk about a lot, how students don't necessarily get these skills that we have, right? Let me see here. All right, hey Delena, I'm just gonna catch up here, so you see who's here. All righty. Karen says, me too. Sometimes fear. Yeah, a little paralysis and analysis paralysis. Absolutely. Hello, Sabrina. Hi, Delina. 
Sabrina says, sorry, I am late. No worries. No worries. No demerits or anything, Sabrina. We are talking about old school skills. Uh, Delina and Sabrina, who just joined, the first one is the, the number one of the three old old school skills. And I, I can't, I, I should just say like skills, old school skills um, that we have is being able to do it right the first time. Watch the replay. I did a whole thing on like the typewriter and whiteout and how that has given us amazing skills to plan, synthesize, organize, edit, rough draft, etc. Super helpful skill for us because we can really think through our projects, our businesses, our ideas. We'll think about consequences of doing this. And yes, sometimes we can overthink it as Janet was saying, but we have the skill to do it. So that was number one. Okay, number two. Can anyone guess what number the number two old school skill might be? Anybody? Please give me some guesses. This is fun. Christina said, I had relationships with people of all ages. Yes, that's good. That's good. All right. Who can guess what the, what the number two skill will be? And by the way, for transparency, for those of you who will start doing Facebook Lives very soon, which I know all of you are dying to do because they're very helpful for your business, uh, I ask these questions and ask you to comment because that is considered engagement and Facebook will see that you all are typing comments versus just liking and then that tells Facebook that it's good content and they're going to show it to more people. So there's just a little pro tip for you. <laughs> oh, while we're waiting for, there's also this like 30 second delay by the time I, from when I ask you a question and you answer. So I have to fill it with awkward things like that. Let's see here. Let's see here. All right, Christina. Susan says we can talk on the phone. Oh, Susan might have nailed it. Hang on. Let's see. We do it better. We do, Christina. Ste okay, communication. All right. So, so far, Sus Susan and Stephanie have nailed it. Sabrina says flexibility, resilience. Very good ones. Very good ones. Okay, so Stephanie and Susan nailed it. Our number two old school skill, and by the way, these are just the top three that I picked. We have a lot of them, is real people skills. We have real people skills, right? So Susan and Stephanie nailed it. So like I love social media and smartphones like the next person, but there is nothing better than like an actual conversation, like a real conversation, like face to face. Karen says building relationships. Yes, totally part of this. This is what I'm talking about. So, you know, like actually speaking to people is kind of like a dying art. <laughs> it kind of is. So like um, if you like our younger counterparts, like when I was corporate, even like the younger counterparts, they prefer to text. Like they just text you this, right? And to me, texting is, you know, sure, it's one thing like, hey, I'm on my way. Okay, I'll be there at five, you know, that kind of shit. But for general conversation, to me, one, texting is very anonymous. You know, we so we get to kind of just hide behind the screen and it doesn't really require thorough thought process or um, having to think through what we're saying. And it kind of goes back to that lazy thinking. And, and and I don't want to call millennials lazy. It's just they haven't they didn't have the same things we had. So they've had a different experience. Um, but it is kind of just lazy thinking like a, you can text like, LOL, you know, or okay, WTF, you know what I mean? Like you don't really have to think it through very much. And so we don't have to, they don't have to be very sophisticated uh, conversations or communicators. Paula says, yes. Christina says, yes, I miss real conversations. It is a dying art, right? So our old school advantage, our old school advantage. And again, this is kind of an intangible because we just grew up with it, right? We just grew up with it. Um, and, per, and I personally think the world is coming full circle. Like people, we've been hiding behind our, our screens and our laptops for so long that people are actually, like Christina just said, I miss real conversations. People are craving like real connection again, real connection again. And that's why I think in businesses now, in fact, I just had this discussion yesterday in a mastermind I'm in and I was talking about 
my scrappy business club, my membership program. And I was kind of dissecting the different parts of it, the master classes, this and that. And I said, in all honesty, what I find to be the most valuable and what I think the members find most valuable is the community. <laughs> it's a place to come and actually talk to people like real people and you know have real conversations versus just you know behind your phone and text and all so i think the world is coming full circle to that but we have crazy good people skills because we didn't have these screens we didn't have phones i mean we had telephones of course but you know it was like that 50 foot long cord that went around your house it wasn't like you spent your life on the phone it we just didn't so we grew up talking to people and I, I even wrote down here, like, um, I remember, and I don't think this was just my family, but if you all remember, do you remember like your mom and dad, like coaching you how to talk to people? I remember from like a young age, like, um, you know, how to talk to your teacher or how to talk to um, the doctor or, you know, how to make an like call and make an appointment. Like, and it was very scary. Like when you're a little kid, like, hello, my name's Colleen. I, but we were coached kind of how to talk to people from a very young age, I guess, because we didn't have the technology. So you had to talk to people, right? I mean, did anyone else like, did your parents, let's see, Paula says, I just told my son, you want an answer for your father, from your father, talk to him face to face right and face to face is scary for the young people these days it's so easy to hide behind the phone and text the phone and text now i will admit too um when my hubby was still alive and like i'd be working in my office and he'd be working in his office i would text him like hey what time are we stopping for dinner okay that was totally lazy i know but we also had face-to-face -face conversations, right? <laughs> so, so there is that. Christina says, yep. So we did. So we have these crazy, you know, old school people to people, like, and it was, and it's difficult. I mean, face-to-face -face conversations are one thing, but we also had to have those face-to-face, -face, you know, like hard discussions. Uh, you know, I was very disappointed in this or confrontational of sorts. So we kind of learned to uh, work those people skills, right? And so learning to communicate with people was like just part of our life in education and it was direct communication. So that's a huge, huge asset and it's a huge point of differentiation that we have in our businesses today when we compare ourselves to a younger set. Like if somebody, a younger set is doing something similar to what it is we want to do, and I, you know, I'm in groups with, you know, much younger people doing very similar. And it's just a different, I mean, I learn a lot, but it's a different, it's just different. It's different. Catherine says, yes, my mom coached me on being respectful to adults. Oh, yes. Oh, absolutely. Now, I didn't grow up, I grew up in St. Louis, which was like, if you're, you know, if you're from the States, it was divided in the Civil War. So Southern Missouri was the South and I was from St. Louis, which is kind of the North. And I only bring this up because in the South, you can really tell like parents are still very much like their children to their parents will say, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, yes, sir, no, sir. I didn't grow up like that, but I was definitely, you know, Mrs. So-and-so, thank you, please, you know, it was very, yes, I agree, Catherine. I had very much the same. So, but we just learned that uh, kind of interpersonal communications as part of our life. And it's very lacking now. It is very, very lacking now. And I see it a lot in young people. They have trouble like having just uh, regular conversations or starting conversations. So anyhow, so we have these crazy good skills. So um, let's see here, what else did I say? So here, here's, so we have these crazy good skills. So here's my pro tip, catch them off guard. Like have a real conversation with your, with your customers. Like talk about a point of differentiation. I mean, I sent um, uh, my, my Scrappy Business Club, which I la launched in April and I sent actual thank you notes to people. And I have to tell you, I had people like, oh my gosh, you sent a thank you note, like a handwritten thank you note. I'm like, yeah, I still do that. I still do that. So, I mean, we can really catch them off guard. <laughs> it's a good point of differentiation. But I also think beyond that, we have 
uh, just kind of a more innate ability or we're definitely more comfortable having face-to-face -face conversations even if they're more difficult conversations because we've learned how to do that so uh, let's see Christina says I've tried meetups everyone stares at their phones doesn't that make you crazy doesn't that make you crazy it, yeah I, I know what you mean Christina go on like a kayaking meetup people don't pull their phones out because they're afraid they're gonna drop in the water no, so there. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Here we go. Who can guess what number three is? Oh, who can guess what number three is? Apparently, I didn't learn. Who can guess what number three is? I'm going to give you a hint because this one is a little bit more elusive. Okay. I spent my entire adult career until I was canned <laughs> in educational publishing. Okay. So as I said earlier, I spent my life on, and I worked in higher education publishing. So on college campuses and all this, and this old school skill was the most lacking uh, skill that uh, instructors, teachers, professors would say children are lacking today. And what's really strange is it's not really something um, it's not really something you just learn, especially not in our modern society. So I wonder if anybody can guess what it is. Let's see here while you do that. Karen says, yes, our host agency sales manager said the written card still has a huge impact. It does. It used to be like we hated getting snail mail. Now it's like a special thing. Like you get a thank you card in the mail or, um, you know, like my nephew who's 30, God, he's 30 now. Oh my Lord. And this is not really picking on him. I think it's a sign of the times. I have never once received like a thank you card from him, like for birthday or Christmas presents, which is really strange because my sister and I, like we would have had our ass whooped like if we didn't send a thank you card to somebody. Uh, let's see here. Okay. Good writing skills. That's a good one, Christina. It is not it, but that is a good one. Stephanie says listening. That's not it either, but that's a good one. Christina, grammar. Yeah, and I think the writing is, a lot of it is technology, is really uh, undermining language um, in a lot of ways. And, you know, my master's was in applied linguistics, so I did study a lot about that. Technology has undermined that in a lot of ways. Um, but also the, the school systems and how they've changed, and at least in the states, like so many states have this common core or kind of everything is, you know, you teach to the test and it's not good. It's not like when we were growing up, you know, I went to the little local Catholic school and like we had to diagram sentences like ad nauseum and you'd run out of chalkboard and then you'd go over to the other chalkboard and keep diagramming sentences. <laughs> That's how we learned it. So grammar, Stephanie says listening. Paula says paying attention and focusing. You guys are getting close. Tina says I handwrite thank you notes on the packing slips that go out in every order. Uh, in addition to an email, thank you. Yes, and I bet you get, people are like, oh, look at that. She wrote me a nice note. It's so true and it's personal. Okay, the number three old school skill that we have that is, like I said, is a little bit more elusive is what is referred to, at least in the educational industry, as critical thinking skills. Critical thinking skills. And that's why I said, it's a little bit more elusive, but it is a biggie. And it goes, it actually kind of goes hand in hand with our first skill, uh, doing things right at the first time. Tina says she's getting great reviews. Awesome. Karen says, don't write in cursive, though it, nobody under 20 won't be able to read it. That is true. They stopped teaching cursive in schools, although I heard they're bringing it back. Because I was wondering, like, how would you sign a contract if you can't, sign your name like I, I don't know maybe I'm, I think they're teaching it again in some places but anyhow so critical thinking skills and like I said this is kind of married to the first one do it right the first time in a sense but let me let me let me walk you through this so the definition I looked this up the definition of critical thinking is the objective analysis and evaluation of an issue in order to form a judgment right? So it's basically being able to think and problem solve. And so it's things like clear communication, problem solving, creativity, being able to think out of the box. And 
what's happened in our school systems, just, you know, based on what I learned in my career is, you know, so many states, this is here again in the US, um, everything became so um, teaching to the test, everything became standardized. And we had to teach to the lowest denominator, which we don't have to get into a public discussion or political discussion here. So they have these tests. And so that's all they teach to teach to the test, teach to the test. So the kids aren't really doing problem solving, interactive, engaging activities, right? So these kids have not learned critical thinking skills. And here, okay, here, here, I mean, we learned critical thinking skills in a lot of ways, but here, this is the example I always think of. We, oh, let me ask you this. I'm going to ask you, how do you think we became critical thinkers? How do you think we became critical thinkers? And if you've read one of my past articles, don't give it away. Uh, Christina says, creative science geek here. That's all natural. Yeah, you're the fossil lady. Okay, so how do you think we came across these critical thinking skills? And like I said, if you've read like one of my blogs or something and you know the answer, don't necessarily give it away. Just give me a guess here. Because this is, again, this is just times have changed. And so this thing is no longer necessary. And I'm not sure it's not, you know, it's a good thing that it's gone. All right. I don't see anything coming in yet. We're going to see what's coming in. How you think we became good critical thinkers? And it looks like my storm has passed. It's still blowing, but I don't hear the thunder boomers anymore. Okay. All right. I won't keep you in suspense. Okay. Who remembers... Who remembers, oh, hang on, here's a comment. Let me see. Let's see here. Uh, Christina says we had to do research and decide relevancy. Yes, you are very hot. Karen says we had to figure stuff out, no Google. Yes, you ladies, you guys, you ladies are on it. Okay, so here was my question. Who remembers the library card catalog system? the old Dewey Decimal system. Who remembers that? I know y'all do. I can still smell the card catalog in the library. I can still smell it. Doing it ourselves, yes, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so you guys are hitting it right on. So the card catalog system, think about it. This is the equivalent of having to know how to spell a word in order to look it up in a dictionary, right? When you think about it, you had to know a lot. Oh, wait, hang on, there's more comments here. I wanna see what's coming up here. This is funny. Okay, everybody remembers the, the library card system. Not funny. I can still smell it like in my memories, isn't that funny? Tina says, oh yeah, Catherine, yes. Uh, Stephanie says, I'm mostly listening while helping my aunt pack her house. So sorry for a little feedback. No worries. No worries. Okay. Uh, yes, Karen remembers it. Christina says, I worked in the library in school. So she definitely rem remembers it. Okay. So the, the card catalog system was the equivalent of having to look a word up in the dictionary that you didn't know how to spell. It's a little bit odd, right? Because if you knew how to spell the word, you wouldn't have to look it up in the dictionary, right? The same was true when we're at the library. We had to know, we had to like really think hard and we had to find out as much about our topic as we could to even know where to look in the card catalog, right? I mean, it, it wasn't as easy, like somebody said, as Google, where you could just start putting in Google, you know, tons of search terms and see what comes back. You, we didn't have that. Like we had to like really figure out uh, the the main point of the topic. We had to analyze. We had to synthesize. We had to think out of the box. We had to get creative. It wasn't just easily cross referenced with the computer. It was all of these things. So God, if you ever had to do like a paper, it was like hours at the card catalog, right? Trying to find your topic and books and and books. You know, like actual books. <laughs> Tina says, I did too, Christina, loved it and reading. So you guys worked at the library, fun. All right, Sabrina says, I remember organization, categories, etc. Yes, but what this gave us, it was this amazing critical thinking 
skill because we had to say, okay, I'm doing, uh, I need information on such and such. Well, then you had to think about, okay, what is such and such? And you had to like start logically thinking through what topics would I look up? Where would I look up? Like under which category would it be? Would it be science or math or history or geography? I mean, all these things. So we had to just learn how to think through things. We had to learn to think through things before we could even get to the information that we needed. And so that gave us these critical thinking skills. And I know teachers today, they say that students aren't learning them because of things like Google or um, Alexa or I'm Alexa. I'm not talking to you now. I'm talking about you. My Alexa has come awake. You know, students today can just say, you know, Alexa, like, what time is it? The time is 4.46 p.m. You hear that? She just told me the have time. Good afternoon. Thank you, Alexa. You have a good afternoon, too. Uh, so we don't have to know anything. We can just Google it, and it's instantly there. Hi, Lisa. Uh, let's see here. Christina says, autocorrect needs a dictionary. <laughs> it's guessing in unknown languages. That is very true. Uh, let's see here. All right. Uh, looking at our comments. Prehistoric brain dump. Yes, right? And Lisa joined us. Oh, Janet says her Alexa just answered me too. How funny is that? But it's true. We can ask them anything. And I know that, I know teachers talk about like that's kind of the bane of their existence. Kids will go home and just like they'll do entire reports. They just start asking their, you know, device. I'm not going to keep saying her name. And it gives them all the answers. Like, so they don't even have to like figure anything out. Okay. And so Paul is did too. All right. We need to give her another name. We need to give her like, we'll call her Ellie. Ellie. Okay. Because then she won't answer. So Ellie. Okay, and so Flinkies is too. All right, so we're just gonna call her Ellie for now on because mine is like literally right next to me. So we'll just call her Ellie since I have gotten everybody's Ellie's talking back. Okay, but back to the critical thinking. So it's, uh, you know, we just, we had to learn, um, we had to think hard. That was the only way I can describe it. We had to think really hard about things because let's say you were doing a paper on, uh, I'll pick on Christina, on fossils right? Well, where do I go to find information on fossils? Do I go to the science section? Is there a geology section? Is there a dinosaur section? Is, you know, we had to think through all these things because you'd spend hours going through the card catalog and then it would reference something else and you'd go to another category and da -da -da -da, you know, all these things. And so we had to just think hard because we didn't just have information at our fingertips. Now, I'm not knocking having information at our fingertips because it is also fabulous because you can just, you know, Google how do I and you boom, 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 you have an answer instantly. Uh, but on the other hand, it's it hasn't, um, you know, kids who have grown up with that all the time now have never had to think hard about things or figure things out. And so that is where we have like this incredible advantage in terms of, um just general thinking and um, what's the other word? I keep saying synthesizing, but just thinking through an idea or a plan or, um, you know, like I use my notebooks, which, you know, and I know a lot of you are notebook people. I think that goes back to our days of school where you had to like brainstorm and mind map and write notes and come back and put more things in the margin because we were trying to figure it all out and put the pieces together before we went and executed something because executing was kind of like one and done or you're starting over. So it was kind of a harder thing. So that is like an amazing old school skill that we have. Again, that's kind of elusive um, and it's not really tangible. But my the whole point of today's Facebook Live is we spend so much time start, when we're starting these businesses like, oh, my God, I don't know this tech stuff. And, oh, that's so hard. And, oh, I have to learn Facebook. And, oh, oh, oh. And we completely forget to acknowledge what we're bringing to the table already. And the thing is, what we're bringing to the table cannot just be learned. I mean, it's like earned over time. It's learned over time. And it's learned in context because we had a very different lifestyle, a very different environment. So it gave us very specific skills that you can't just go 
to um, somebody today and say, like, learn critical thinking skills. In fact, that was, you know, in educational publishing, teaching critical thinking skills became a number one um, discipline that we sold into. There's books trying to teach critical thinking skills. And it kind of fails because it, it has to be done in context and in your environment. And we, you can just go and like, you know, oh, let me see here. It's really hard to learn it because you're not forced to. There's no reason to force you to. So those are the old school skills. Those are the top three that I picked. There are lots more. Uh, like Sabrina mentioned, resiliency. And I think it all ties in because we just didn't have instant gratification, instant access, instant communication. We didn't have these things uh, to rely on. And so we had to learn other coping skills, other, um, you know, just uh, implementation skills to do things because that's how we got things done, right? That's how we got things done. So, whew, all right, we're getting to my last page here. Look at this, look at this. But anyhow, so this critical thinking, I think it, it, it allows us to um, narrow in on solutions very quickly. It allows us to think through like what the consequences might be. Like if I do A, okay, then what, what happens after that? And while this is an amazing skill, I also think that this is where, like Janet was saying, where sometimes analysis paralysis can come in to play because we start thinking through potential consequences of things that we're also not 100% familiar with. So like one, um, one example of this is uh, like this month in my membership club, we're just talking about Facebook pages. And I'm like, go start your Facebook page. Start it now. Just go sign up. Start your Facebook page right now. Go do it. Don't wait. Just do it right now. Give it a quick name. And, uh, you know, a lot of us, um, you know, a lot of people in the club, well, first I need to do this, and then I need to do this, and then I, no, go start it right now. So we can get into that analysis paralysis. So I think we need to maybe be more choosy when we activate <laughs> these critical thinking skills versus just acting quickly. Because the truth is, today, business, it does move quickly. It, it, and we do need to move more quickly than I think sometimes we're comfortable with. Um, but using these critical thinking skills is also a very good thing because you, you can come back and ask really good questions like, okay, but if I do this, what happens then? So, you know, we get, you know, we get really great questions. So obviously from you all. Christina says, memorization is not so big now. Christina, it's because of Google. I've actually talked to my nephew, uh, like I said, who's 30, very smart kid. He has a double degree in physics and math, uh, really has zero social skills, um, or maybe not zero. He has like social skills like other young people today. And we had this discussion one time. I'm like, we were talking about, you know, school and memorizing. And he's like, I don't have to memorize anything. I have Google. And I'm like, yeah, but like if you're at a cocktail party and somebody starts talking about the Civil War or something, are you going to be sitting there Googling it? Or are you just going to sit there like an idiot, like, you know, not have any information on it? Or like who the current president is? Are you going to have to Google that? Or you know what I mean? So I see that. It's, but that instant access to information has made the lazy thinking, lazy thinking. So Catherine says, I struggle with analysis paralysis too, also known as difficulty making a decision and moving forward. That would be a great future Facebook Live. Yeah, and you know we can talk about that a lot because analysis paralysis comes from a lot of direct, it comes from obviously the fear of the unknown, fear of failure, but it becomes a really great procrastination tool. Like, well, I'm still researching. I'm still researching how to do a, and you can research till the end of time. At some point, you just got to pull the trigger. So it becomes an excuse is what happens. Um, it does become an excuse. So we can definitely talk about it. So it's good to analyze. It's good to have a general idea of where you're going. But at some point, then you have to like, you know, pull the trigger and move it forward. So it is totally true, though. So anyhow, so that those were my three top old school skills that I just want you all to remember we have. 
Uh, they're intangible. We can't really point to them or measure them, but we have them and it's a huge asset. It's a huge point of differentiation for us in this modern world, but we also can't let it to um, like hold us back. Janet says, I've been researching for years. Yeah, it's time to, it's time to put the Google away and start acting because you, you will learn more in the action and implementation, but that is another great Facebook live. So anyhow, what do you ladies think about this? Does this help you remember the great stuff you're bringing to your business? Does this help you with that? I hope it does. Give me some comments. I'd love to hear. I'd love to hear uh, what you think. Give me some comments. And before you go, because there's, uh, and if you're watching the replay, please pretend it's live because if you have questions or comment, I will get uh, notifications and we will interact just like it is live. But because we have a lot of new um, scrappy entrepreneurs coming to this page and to the group, I just a couple of things I wanted to remind you of and I put in the copy for this Facebook live so as soon as I hit end in the video post to the Facebook page you'll see these links but number one uh, sign up to get notifications for these Facebook lives it's a click of a button and then what happens is when you subscribe to get notifications all that happens is you'll get a quick reminder in your Facebook Messenger a few minutes before that just says, hey, going live, click the button, and it takes you, brings you right here to, to the page. Second thing I would ask you to do is to, um, if you haven't already, here on the page, as soon as I'm done with this live, go to the top of the page and hit like, follow, and turn notifications on. So that's another way you can get notifications. Let's see here. Uh, hello, Michelle. How are you? Uh, Catherine says, good point on remembering our assets versus focusing on what I'm lacking in the tech ability. Yeah, because here's another thing, Catherine. These skills that we have, these old school skills, like I said, they're, uh, they're learned and earned over decades of time. It's not something you can just go take a class and learn versus the tech and social media stuff is these are just a skill that you can go learn. You can go take a class on, you know, how to do a Facebook live or you can go do a class, you know what I mean? So those are skills that we can just learn. So we have these incredibly valuable skills that you just can't go get versus this other stuff that we kind of focus on that we have to learn. We can learn. We can go take a class. You can, you know, come into the Scrappy Business Club. You can go to Udemy. You can go to YouTube. I mean, anywhere we can just, you know, learn them. So that's awesome. Christina says, yes, I can smell the library catalog cards. I still can too. Kind of that musty. Yeah, anyhow. All right. So sign up for notifications. The link is in this post right here. Uh, I think I called it get Facebook live notifications. Again, uh, just subscribe. You'll get a message before I go live a few minutes in your Facebook messenger. And also on this page, go ahead and hit like, follow, and get notifications. So that's another way you'll get notifications. And third, I'm getting ready to open the doors again to the Scrappy Business Club, which I only do occasionally. I put a link here again in the post to get on the wait list. So, I, so you'll be the first to know when I'm opening the doors to the Scrappy Business Club again. So the wait list link is there and the link to get notifications for Facebook Live is there. So, woo, what do you ladies think? Any comments, any final words, any, what do you have? Any questions? What do you think? What do you think? I love talking about these things because I do, I just think we overlook, I, we overlook all the great stuff we're bringing to our businesses and we just think about um, kind of these odds and ends that we don't know, as Catherine just said, and it's usually the tech and social media. And these are just things that are totally learnable. I mean, they're totally le easily learnable versus a lot of the stuff we bring. Same with um, the expertise of your business, of your thing. That's years in the making. That's years in the making. You know, you did, you know, Catherine, you did, you didn't just become like an expert jewelry maker overnight. Um, or Sabrina, you just didn't become an expert in, 
you know, uh, healing and healthcare and things like that overnight, we're bringing so much experience to the mix and it's just these other little tools we have to, to learn and worry about. So Sabrina says, we are amazing. We are amazing. Aren't we? We totally are amazing. We totally are. And the, st the statistics and data show the same. There's that uh, study that came out from the Kaufman Foundation, which I've talked about before, that uh, people over 50 are like, I probably won't quote these, right? So don't, don't hold me to these, like 60% more likely to start a business and succeed than um, somebody in their 30s. And it points to this whole fact that we have experience, we have the patience, we have the resiliency, we know we don't expect it to be overnight. We don't have that um, just expectation of instant gratification and instant success. So we have that. Um, Christina says, when put all together, I realize I have a lot. Yes, we all do. We all have a lot. And it's funny because it's the stuff we worry most about is like, the stuff that's easily learnable because you can you know, a click of a button you can go to youtube and youtube how do i you know do a b and c and boom you have a video there showing you exactly how to do it those types of things versus the skills i think that really matter in business that we are going to lead to long-term success are these skills these intangible skills that we have the patience the resilience the uh, ability to be flexible and pivot like Sabrina talked or she just says to be persistent. Yes, absolutely. We know that it's not going to happen overnight. We know that it's not one and done. You know, we know the old if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. We have that. We have that in us. Hey, Lori, how are you? Lori says just tuned in. We'll listen to the replay. Absolutely. Like I say, the replay is just like it's live. It's just like it's live. If you have questions or want to jump in, comment and everything and it's just like it is absolutely live so all right so any final questions ladies or anything of that nature but please do um subscribe to get facebook live notifications and if you're not already in the scrappy business club and you're interested get on the wait list and both links are in the copy right here and i don't see any other comments coming in so i'm going to do this i'm going to do my that's a wrap. And I always do it was a take one because I only take one take on these. <laughs> All right, ladies, I will see you here on the page in the free Facebook group. And for my clubbers, I will see you in the private club Facebook group. So have a wonderful Monday afternoon, evening, wherever you are in the world. And I will see you. All right. Cheers. Bye bye.